So this is uh, tip number one. Posture, saluting posture, hero posture, and hero smile. Ta-ta! Yeah? So, and, and we're talking heroes like in the 1930s. We're not talking heroes uh, like in Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, you can do that if you know what you're doing. But generally, is it all these... We know all these uh, uh, slow-mo sequences in, in, uh, in, in Spartacus where they go... And this is totally stupid. I mean, it's... Yeah, you, you get what you pay for. If you do this, then uh, this is what uh, the finesse of your technique will look like. <coughs> so, um, okay, so posture and smiling uh, equals uh, spirit. And then um, the next thing is um, don't ever look at the weapons. Everybody knows that, but um, you will find yourself looking at the bind at one place trying to figure out what's going on. As an exercise for you, um, just keep staring through the opponent. Don't even look at him, just keep staring through him. Um, it's, Musashi calls this the thousand mountains gaze. Because if you look through the opponent, you can see the mountain range in the background. And so you have all the peripheral vision that you need. All right? Um, uh, that is so. So that is number uh, number two. Keep looking through the opponent while, of course, smiling. Um, this will make sure that your sphere does not inflate. If I'm fencing somebody and I start to look at the weapon, my fighting sphere inflates, and my focus will be will not no longer include the opponent. Okay? That's not a good idea. You want to include the opponent in your fighting uh, awareness while you are fighting. Right? If, you, if you start looking at the weapons, you are excluding him and you have no idea of the geometry of uh, the fight. Okay, so uh, once again, posture and spirit, that's number one. Number two is don't look at the weapons, look through the opponent. And this is closely linked to number three. Uh, be aware where the center of the fight is. The geometry of the fight, to be as if you could come to me, just as you are, <coughs> just stay there. So uh, um, the geometry of the fight is really important. The one thing that you want to uh, uh, keep track of is the center, which I call the uh, uh, imaginary space. Um, right between the two of us. And this space moves um, <coughs> as we move. So now the center would be above my buckler. But if I step here, so the center moves to here. If I step away, the center moves into my direction half the speed that I'm moving away from my opponent. Okay? And this part, uh, so this part here, needs to be con in control. If it's not in control, you are gambling. So if, uh, if you pick up a weapon, <coughs> So, um, if we are binding in the center, uh, now this is a neutral situation. None of us actually controls the center. Um, if, uh, uh, if I put him aside, I control this center. Now, if I move, if I move, the center moves as well. So, uh, if I keep this bind and I move here, the center moves with me and the situation has changed. I did a stupid move because now, I gave the center to him, now he's in control of the center, see? He controls it with his weapon from the inside, puts me out, and the center is here, so he's in a position where he can actually fight against me. So um, being aware where the center is is the first part of, uh, or is a necessary prerequisite for learning to control the center. If you don't know where the center is, and you have a uh, super technique to control it, it doesn't help you, right? Uh, it's like uh, having a great car and being lost somewhere without any maps and GPS. <laughs> Doesn't help your course. Yeah? You will know where, to, where you want to go. So uh, a, simple, uh, a simple way of locating the center uh, links looking through the opponent the, um, and not uh, looking at the weapons, so that's uh, point number two. Um, uh, links it to Point number two, in such a fashion that if you imagine that you're driving uh, a car, right, and uh, then, you would, uh, then you would be looking where you're going, and the alignment of your hands and your body and your head remains pretty much the same. Yeah? You, uh, you don't do something like this in a car, right? <laughs> so um, if you think you're driving a car, this will help to also confine Patrick, if you could come to me, ohne Maske. It will also helps to confine the, um, 
the fight into a smaller space, right? So if, uh, if we are trying to strive to control the center here by uh, moving in such a fashion that if we're driving a car, keeping our weapons in front of us or our hands in front of us, we can get, we can keep track of the center and can try to control the center. So it doesn't really matter who wins that fight, but this is a good way to get into true fencing uh, in a tactical, uh, from a tactical perspective. So try this. So these are three hints for you, three tips when you now proceed with your fencing. We have a little more than an hour to go, or actually an hour and 15 minutes to go. Uh, number one, what was number one? Tip number one? Smile and posture. Yeah, smile and posture. Raise your inner warrior and, uh, and look, uh, look like, a, like a hero, like a, a hero, exactly. And then uh, number two, do you remember number two? Exactly, look through the opponent, don't look at the weapons. And that uh, brings us to number three, um, be aware of the center. And if you have, uh, if you have trouble, um, of being aware of the center, then think of driving a car. That often helps. Okay, good.